Has to be said, as a diplomat, you're not really offering much diplomacy, are you? Lol. Assalamu alaikum guys and welcome to another episode of Smile to Jannah. A couple of days ago I saw an interview on Sky News and it actually shocked me. Not because it was Islamophobic, because I mean that sort of stuff doesn't uh, shock me anymore, but it was actually in favour of, of Muslims and in particular Palestinians. <laughs> It turns out that Sky News actually did a good job interviewing the Israeli UK ambassador. Oh, Council, wait no, a second, I'm not sure everyone, everyone you, is aware of no, the fact said, I'm answering you, uh, what's the political aim I'm behind you, the violence? I'm asking, People yes, in but, Israel, but again, the citizens of Israel no, against but Jews, hang on. we see them calling for holy and religious again, war. I understand, this is what's happening I understand in the world. Hamas is I, using I, this political yes. crisis. Yes. Should yes. on Tel Aviv? Do you think Tel Aviv is a settlement? Do you think Tel Aviv is a settlement? Do you expect that from a sovereign nation not to protect its citizens this is what you're basically saying to uh, right. put synagogues in okay. fire those are this is vandalism against holy sites right. those I are things that. no I sovereign country I can mean, accept hang on a minute did we play that last bit this is vandalism against holy sites right. those are things that. no sovereign country I can mean, accept it, it, i don't think she gets the irony of what she's just said this is not 20, 30 years ago where we didn't have social media and just relied on mainstream television. We now have social media. I would say over 80% of the population has seen the images and the videos that have emerged from Al-Aqsa Mosque and seeing the police, the Israeli police, desecrate the first Qibla of the Muslims and after Makkah and Medina, the most holiest sites to the Muslims. Synagogues were under fire yesterday well, on, in the heart of bit, Israel. Bit, you cannot ignore the facts. I just you cannot want, ignore well, the facts. I'm not ignoring any facts. Any <laughs> Yes, so she mentions this yet again and she seems clearly distraught over this. But imagine the Muslims and how we'll be feeling. No, no, you, you don't want to be mentioning that. But seeing as she is the Israeli UK ambassador, I would have expected her English not to be as criminal as the occupation that she seems to be defending. What? Committing a double war crimes? A double war crimes? You're a joke! He's what would you do if Britain was under a fire? Under a fire? No one can take you seriously after that. Do you think Britain would have sit in well, silent? Would have sit in well, silent? Wow. Well, the, the big disproportional is disproportional. <laughs> The interviewer was mega calm throughout the whole interview. In fact, he maintained the same tone. Even when she was raising her voice and getting triggered, my guy right here was proper on point. It's a bit rich to say the United Nations should do something when Israel is ignoring what the United Nations has said in the context of settlements. Can I ask you something? What would you do if Britain was under a fire? Do you see what I'm saying? And then her response was the classic emotional one. Yeah, that, you know, aunties resort to when you corner them, they go to that whole personal thing. Yeah, let me tell you a story, mate. Yeah, uh, I just spoke to my parents. My mother, over 60 years old woman, you, I'm a jurist by, in my background, so they're trying to kill right. my children, my brothers. This isn't Middle Eastern television, bruv. You gotta come on point. You can't be just dishing out stories about what's going on in your basement. They know that the law as it's currently being applied to the claiming of property in East Jerusalem is biased against uh, the Palestinians. Basically, they have no rights and Jewish people you do You cannot have, do, buy this do, excuse. Do, do You're too right. serious for that. Yes, thank you. No one cares about Israeli law in an occupied territory. This is what international law constantly tells us and the human rights organizations that have called Israel an occupying power. Amnesty International to name one. And did you hear a response? You cannot buy this excuse, you're too serious for that. You're too serious for that. What is that? Some sort of Israeli version of the Joker's Why so serious? I mean who even says that? And kids cannot go to school and have yeah. daily routine because kids are under attack no, but, but and schools are under kids attack. Kids in Gaza can't go to school and they're being killed. Yes my guy, do you see how desperate she is in making Israel seem like the victim? And the only thing that she can present is, oh, oh, the daily routine of the children. Well in Gaza the children are being killed. In Israel they just have to sit in your basement for a couple of hours. It's, it's Hamas no, sending it's the rockets. Israel which is countering with the Air Force 
with the strikes, which you acknowledge are in civilian areas because you blame Hamas for using civilians S uh, as shields. Yo, he set the trap. She took the cheese and then bang, she's in the trap and she doesn't even realize it. He got her to admit on television that Israel is targeting civilians. What would you do oh. if London was under fire and rockets were thrown on your house? What would you do? Do you think Britain would have sit in well, silent, not protecting its citizen? Do you expect any sovereign country well, not of course, to protect its of citizens? Of course you can protect citizens. The question is the retaliation uh, and the attacking of civilians in Gaza and elsewhere, which, as we know, once again is leading to disproportionate suffering uh, on the Palestinians. Yes, again she resorted to her emotional card. He maneuvered past that very well and went to the main point which is the disproportionate response of Israel being a military might when Palestine doesn't even have an army. Do you expect that from a sovereign nation not to protect its citizens? This is what you're basically saying. I, I say people who've been victim of terror attacks, countries who've been victim of terror attacks do not always respond in the way that Israel's responding. Well, I can yes, brilliant response. Definitely one of my favorites because again, a very emotional thing. She's trying to get him to say, uh, well, we're going to do nothing, nothing. But he didn't take the bait, mate. He's not taking the bait. I can tell you that whoever says kill someone, this is the role of the police to take them into prison because this is illegal. But if you're well, coming back to how, the How many Jewish people have been arrested? Yes! Yes! <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. yes, thank you. He is pushing her. Yeah, he's interrogating her as is the job of the journalists. But we don't see it as much as we should nowadays. We've seen the demonstrators on the streets saying, you know, kill the Jews, kill kill the Arabs. Uh, Jew Actually, it's the Arabs calling kill the Jews. You, no, you weren't, I, you no, weren't and saying and something also, by mistake. And also Israeli Jews saying kill the Arabs, get the Arabs out. <laughs> she's so desperate that <laughs> only when the guy slipped and he's on the floor, then she's like, ha ha, that's my opportunity to kick him. But no, my guy came back. And giving credit where credit is due, I'm not going to take that away from her. Um, she obviously does come from an academic background, which she has told us. And uh, let's see, let's see some of the academia that she's presented. The, actually, some the people Israeli say newspapers. we're being too gentle. Some people say we're being too gentle. As long right. as our, our cities are still under fire, we're being probably too gentle. Oh, some people say you mean Rainbow Dave who sits outside Tesco with his dog Roscoe. <laughs> yeah, some, yeah, yeah, okay, okay, okay. I'll give you that one. I'll give you that. That's a very solid proof right there, huh? Is Mr. Netanyahu exploiting this political crisis? As we know, uh, he's only the acting prime. Prime Minister because of inconclusive elections. He's worried about losing office because of possible prosecutions he might face and that whipping up a security situation or allowing a very dangerous security situation to take place may be simply a cynical way of saving himself. <laughs> Yo this was uh, this was quite a ballsy point to be honest. Uh, man's not even gonna lie though. Yeah the politics behind the whole thing is not being covered as much as it should be. I mean, I can go on. Yeah, this it was a brilliant interview. <laughs> I'll leave the link in the description. But as we know, guys, the media, I mean, I can speak for the UK, it has been arming Islamophobes since time immemorial. And now that Islamophobia is structurally and institutionally embedded in our society, now the journalists are speaking out. And of course, uh, seeing the disparity in how Palestinians are being treated in the media and uh, Israelis seen as they're such a, a, a giant social media outcry. I don't think the, the journalists can do the biased reporting that they are used to. But nevertheless, it does prove that they can do balanced reporting if they so choose and they can interrogate these individuals without fear of reprisal. Let's hope it continues and uh, let's leave it there. Of course, don't forget to remember your Palestinian brothers and sisters in your prayers. Let's leave it there, guys. Until next time which you acknowledge are in civilian areas because you blame Hamas for using civilians uh, as shields. Assalamu alaikum.